Okay, I am done cleaning for today. I'm gonna get started on this project. As you can see, I got a long ways to go here to clean this place up. When we moved out here in the 70s, uh, the old man and old woman that, that, that dad bought this place from, they had been here for 80 years. So this is basically just an old pole barn, enclosed pole barn. But he had it so full of junk. I mean, it was full to the rafters, basically, almost. You could not, you couldn't walk in the back door or the front door. Uh, one one of the doors wouldn't even open. He had so much junk in front of it. But we finally got it all cleaned out. And for several months, uh, mom and dad kept chickens in here. And until they eventually built the chicken pen that, that you usually see behind me down there. But the problem was, dad was also a hoarder. <laughs> And it wasn't long before, especially when he got up in age, that you couldn't walk out here again. Uh, he didn't throw anything away. And my grandfather, who lived out here for a little while in, in a MOA home, was the same way. He didn't throw nothing away. Between the two of them, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of coffee cans laying around. Just full of random stuff. Nuts, bolts. This one's got some drill bits in it. Um... Who knows? Look at this. Glove. What else is in here? An old hose, water hose mender. And then there's some uh, there's reflectors. But like I say, he didn't throw anything away. But anyway, I'm rambling. So I'm going to get started on this project. Uh, this is part four of the crappie. And today I'm going to be laying out the fins. And uh, so I've got my patterns here, the dorsal and anal fins, pectoral and pelvic fins. And I'm going to be using scraps of wood left over from previous projects. And you may recognize this one. That's actually off of this project. And I will use it to lay out the, um, the fin zone. So I'm going to get started on that and uh, fix, turn the camera around so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll be back in just a second. All right, so I'll cut these out, and then, like I say, I'll lay them out on the pieces here. And uh, so let me get them cut, and I'll be back here in just a second. All right, so those are laid out, and I'm gonna pick the wood that I want to use for both of them. And then I'll draw, draw transfer that to the wood. I'm going to smooth these out a little bit so I can draw on them easier. That makes too rough of a line. So I'm going to do that off camera and get back here in just a second. Okay, I've got the fins laid out here. I'm gonna lay the pectoral fins out on this one. So I'm gonna do that here and then 
we'll start cutting them out on the bandsaw. Got all these cut out now and and I know I've mentioned this before but I this is gonna be I leave the pectoral and the pelvic fins together in one piece it's just easier to hold them when you're carving them and then as when they're finished then I cut them in half and finish off the ends but and then all these little scrap pieces like this again I'll save those for uh, just little rocks and pebbles that I might use in future projects. So they go in the box here. I may have to redo this one. I may have got the spines a little too narrow, but I, I don't know. I'll, I'll wait till I get it cut out to see. So uh, the pelvic and pectoral fins, I leave together. I've said this, I've said that before. It's easier to hold on to when you're carving. And then once they're done, and then, then I cut them in half and, and create the tabs that go into the body of the fish. Now what I'll do next is I'm gonna draw my center line in here. And I, this is gonna be my show side, so I want the fin to kind of kick out towards the viewer on the, the dorsal fin here on the soft rays. Uh, same with the, with, the, with the anal fin. I think I want it to kick out just slightly, just slightly towards the viewer. So, yeah, all right. So let me start that. I'm gonna draw that center line on here. So I know the I know the spiny fins will stay fairly straight. And then since I want that to have a little kick, I'll draw it just a little bit curved here. If you can see that. So I'm gonna take this down a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this bulk off. I'll go in and cut the bulk off the sides and just thin them down just a little bit. So. Okay, so I've got my movement that I want drawn on on the dorsal and the pelvic fin or the uh, anal fin and I'm going to cut off the bulk wood on the bandsaw here on the pelvic fin I'm just going to do that by hand with the, with the Fordham same with the uh, pectoral fin so I'm going to cut these off with the bandsaw just the bulk and that'll give me just a little bit less I have to do by hand on these because they're a lot thicker. Okay, so they're thinned down now. I'll probably sand these down and then start drawing the detail on these. And 
the rest of this will be done by hand. So here's the other one. So you can kind of see it has just a little, it'll have just a little bit of a kick out that way. And I have the pectoral and the pelvic fins lined out also. So I'm going to go set up on the porch and start working on these and be back in a minute. All right. I've got the fans cut out and I'm getting ready to uh, put the final, the, cut some detail in them. And what you may notice here is this is not the same one I cut on the bandsaw a while ago. This is a, uh, I left the, I cut a new one and left the notches in. I actually did a whole hour after that bandsaw carving this and those notches were just not, they were not even. It was going to be hard to fix. So I decided I just cut a whole new set. So I got a whole new set of the anal and dorsal fin. I did keep the pectoral fin and the pelvic fin. So these are be in good shape. But the main two was the, the dorsal and the anal fin. So I'm going to uh, work on those. And I was going to use, or a matter of fact, I used this big coarse cuts all on the ones yesterday to, to take the thickness down to the center line and it's just too rough the, the final product is just too rough and it's hard to paint the butt to sand smooth so what I'm going to do is I took these down a little bit closer on the belt sander so the finish is a lot smoother and I'm going to use this big drum sander to take it down even closer that way that surface stays smooth and when I get ready to draw on it, it just gives me a smooth surface to start with so but I've got this one cut that's the anal pin you can see I'm gonna have a little bit of kick out there um, can't really tell it yet but I'm gonna have there's gonna be a little kick out here on this one also so anyway I'm gonna get the camera situated and get started on these Oh yeah, that's much better. Alright. Starting to shape up. Like you can see the little kick out of the fin there. And it needs to come down a little thinner here for the tab. And I'm going to wait till I draw on the pattern to see how much I need to take it down this way. Which it won't be much here. Maybe a little bit towards the front here, but you'll see that in a few minutes. But that's shaping up pretty good I'm, I think I like using that better than using that cuts all it just leaves a smoother surface here cuts down a lot of sanding I'll still have to sand it some but not near as much And of course I noticed just now I realize I made another rookie mistake. When I should have cut these out of a piece where the grain is running up and down, or at least at an angle, I cut it, they're cut, the grain's going this way. So that can make it easier to snap. Um, but I'm not gonna cut another one. I'll give it a good soak with uh, after it's finished after I have the um, detail carved in and the wood the burn I'll burn in other details like the fin rays I'll give it a good soak with the uh, super glue and it'll it'll harden it up
I just I just have to be careful with it while I'm working with it so that I don't snap it off by myself. But I think it'll be all right. But in the future, I'm going to start paying more attention to that because I do it all the time. I, I fail to lose, pay attention to which way the grain is growing, going. So, but watch that in yours. Okay, got it down where I want it, and I'm going to leave it just a little thick here. Once I thin the edges, it'll give the appearance of a nice thin fin, and and then after, you know, of course, after I cut the details in it, um, it'll also kind of hide the fact that it's thicker than a than a real fin. I think I've just about got this one down. And it's much easier using this sanding drum than it is using that cuts all bit. It just it's just a lot cleaner. This one's going to take a little more work, but... I've got that one down I may take a little bit more thickness off up here but you can see the movement nice there you'll have a slight kick out Okay, I'm going to be using this little diamond bit. I wish I had one just a little bit bigger, but I don't. So I'm going to make this one work. Um, I don't want to take off too much wood at the time. So I'm going to use this and just take my time. So I'm going to get started on these here. I already got one done here just to see if I was going to like it. So this is what I'm going to use. that'll show up here let me try and see if you can see that so I'm just gonna take my time and go slow and get these spines straight and tapered and I'll be back with you in a minute
Okay. Just about got it down to where I want it. And I'm, right now I'm just putting in the gray detail. Let me see if I can get that up here where you can see it. See if I can get the contrast right. It's kind of hard to see on camera. But the ray split. And then they split again and then they split again. So that's what I'm doing with this little diamond bit. It's got a little flat tip and just kind of holding it on the side going through and putting the lines in and I'll go back later and with the burner before I finish it and burn those in a little deeper so I think I may um, let me hit it a little bit with the deburring tool just to kind of smooth it down a little bit Okay. There it is. Okay. I'm at a stopping point today and I've got the dorsal fin complete. I did a lot of it off camera just because it takes so long to do these. Uh, this is a, about seven hours of work right here. So I'm going to do the rest of them off camera as well. And then when I come back in part five to cut the slots for the body to accept the fins, I'm also going to work on the tail and then I'll show you the fins then. I also worked on the tongue a little bit today. Let me slide that in there. Roughly where it'll go. And let's see if you can see that. Yeah. So anyway, that'll get glued in before I get ready to start final sanding and burning the scales on it. But anyway, I appreciate y'all watching and uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and uh, give me a thumbs up and I'll see y'all in part five.